Hey everybody, Steve here, and welcome back to part two of the SS United States series. Uh, if you previously missed part one, please watch that first so that you are in sync, I guess, with the series. I did a lot more uh, inside shots on the part one. Part two is going to be a few inside, but mainly outside shots. So here we are in a small theater. I believe this was the cabin class and tourist class theater. Uh, making it, you can see it's a lot smaller. You'll see the other theater in a later series or later part for the series. Again, I'll be talking in and out of this video, mainly talking more because there is people talking in the video. Um, you might hear them, you might not, but uh, uh, here's the projection booth to that theater we were just walking in. No projectors, although there is something there with the lever. I have no clue what it is. Uh, maybe it was projector was sitting on that and that was a power lever so um, this here was a just a lounge just an area to relax there's stubs that coming out of the floor right there and I'll get closer so you can see it the they were tables again as if you remember from the previous part the tables did not have candles on them they were all electric candles because the creator William Gibbs did not want this ship to in other words, catch on fire, and he was made it 100% fireproof. So uh, we're going to be going outside right about right in here, and now we're outside. I will be talking in and out of here, so I'm going to kind of let the volume of the video roll. Again, you might hear somebody. So what you're seeing here is uh, kind of with the windbreaker and a wave breaker. So anytime waves come on the ship, this was a way to keep the water from hitting the uh, decks and any people on the other end of this. Uh, not many people were or tourists and were on here. This part of the boat, this was more mechanical section, more of workers of the sh of the ocean liner. Um, so you can see a lot of old uh, winches and mechanical gear here and it's pretty rusted this is all metal here um, as you can see As we walk through the next area where it kind of breaks up waves, you're going to hear the ropes here. I'm going to let you listen to the ropes. It is always windier up here, but we are pretty high up. The ropes. That's the ropes. So you probably heard my main voice when I was recording a video saying what was happening. But yeah, that's every piece of thread in that rope that little sound you're hearing is it's snapping uh, and that's actually normal um, because of the weight of the ship and it's kind of the wind and it sways from the front it's pulling it away from the dock which is causing each thread to snap so they have to keep an eye on the ropes to make sure that you know that they're not getting worse than they are but yeah, that's uh, it was kind of interesting to hear that um, and they did tell me that they did kind of had an issue one time where the front of the ship kind of swayed off the dock and they actually had to get a coast guard to push it back it was kind of interesting to hear that uh, we are looking over the edge and you can kind of see how high it is in the front of the bow here and it is pretty high up and it was very windy as always but we are pretty high up there's the city of philadelphia in the background right there so here is the very front of the ocean liner the bow um, as you can see here there is a call box to your right not much left of it though and an intercom right there to the left uh, those who are familiar with this area here the Ikea is usually the best shot to get a picture of the SS United States um, a lot of people are getting pictures from there and then that's down the Columbus Boulevard the here's a picture or a shot of the ship from the very front looking back
can't put two lines on any of those ballots because there won't be enough stretch and they'll rip it out of here. So this area here was where they would crane in cars, luggage, heavy equipment. It would go all the way down to the bottom of the ocean liner. And that would be the storage area, this big, large opening. Here's the SS United States plaques, and there's the designers and the builders, 1952, Newport News. Power to weight ratios. As a ship, he just wasn't an athlete. He loved it since he was a kid. Um, he went to school to be a lawyer. He fucking hated lawyers. His uh, dad pushed him through it. Uh, he dropped out of Harvard. Uh, I think he went back and finished some stuff because his parents were the best in his arm, but he hated it. He absolutely hated lawyers. So he got into shipbuilding and he was passionate. Come out right here is a another wall, and that was actually another windbreaker. Because when you would go around this corner, which I'm going to do right now, you could not feel the wind anymore. It was kind of a cool way that they designed this ship to have that type of thing. I, I thought that was kind of interesting because there's absolutely no more wind. And when you're in the front of that, it is really windy. And this area here was where they kept the light boats. I will be going down here in the next series to the rear of the ship, and you will see a lot more of that. Now we are walking up to where the bridge is, and bridge as in where the captain and his crew would command and control the ocean liner here. Um, there would also be dock masters, which I'm going to be walking over to, who would help dock the boat when it's coming into port. And this is it right here, and it is probably the best spot to get video and pictures. Now, I'm not even out, but it actually extends over the sh over the water right here. It looks like this is a drone shot. It's not a drone. This is me standing on where the dock master would help command and bring the ship into port. And it is probably one of the coolest spots to get an overview of this massive uh, ocean liner known as the SS United States. We're now going to be walking into the bridge, which held the captain, its crew. Uh, there's not much left of it, as you can see. You can see the stands in the floor, though, where the controls were and the actual steering. What we're going to right now is the, this is right behind the bridge. This is where some of the offices were, where the captain would stay, storage. We're going to kind of be walking around here, again, just like the previous Everything is kind of been stripped. There's not much left at all. It's just the, the skeleton of the hallways and rooms. But this was where the captain would stay and where offices and other crew areas were. There's a staircase here, which I believe, and I'm trying to remember, I think that goes down to the main deck. It's a quick way to get down. So we're going to just be walking through here and uh, different spots. This is a small generator room. Some of the old circuit breakers and the motor for the generator. Small generator room. I am not 100% sure what it powered. I'm assuming it powered some of the equipment here in the bridge. So here's a large open area here. And this system right here, which is kind of neat, one of the only things really here is the old fire system, which is right here. And the, I, I, it's kind of neat to see this. And I can't really explain to you how it worked. Because uh, I, I, it looks like a bunch of light bulbs were in it. But uh, it was the old fire system for the ship. It's kind of neat. You can see a lot of the wiring is gone. And all the conduits below it where it would run down. So that was kind of a cool thing to see here. An interesting thing is we're kind of going to look out some of the windows here of in the bridge and kind of see what it looks like is all the winch wipers in here were manual they you think that they would have a you know air system but no they had to one by one turn a valve to activate those winch wipers uh, i could only imagine that in a storm 
Uh, but another thing is a lot of people, I may mention about how if they do go forward with fixing the ship, this bridge is actually too low and too far back um, to what today's standards are. So they will have to move this forward and higher for it to, I guess, meet today's maritime rules. So that is why they got to move the bridge. Um, it might not seem like that, but that's the case. So thanks for watching this episode. Here is a sneak peek of what's to come on the next episode. Again, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and my website. I will see you on the next one. See ya.